All right, all right, all right, honey. It's another glorious Wednesday. And you know what time it is, honey. So get your crumpets together because it's time to dish tea. And you're dishing tea, darling, with big meats. Hey, babies, what's going on in your world? I want to thank you all for your love and your support, honey, and for having us do what we do when we do it, okay? I'm back. I had to take a break last week, honey, because, child, the Donut Factory had me working all kinds of ways, baby, and, and the doll just needed to take just a little breather to regroup and, 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 you know, pull her world together. So now that I'm here, we're going to get into a real cutesy, cutesy, cutesy way of getting things done, honey. I have a wonderful, wonderful show for you lined up today, and I hope that you find this as entertaining as I do because, um, as you heard, honey, the, the, that's Miss Janet Jackson. For those Janet Jackson fans out there, the diehards, honey, that's 1982 when she first hit the scene with Young Love. And I thought that was appropriate because that's what our show about is, is about today. I may be young, but I'm not foolish. We're going to take a look into the world of the gay youth and monogamy. And I have a couple, honey, who have, who's been here, and they've been monogamously together. And I stress that, monogamously together for six years, okay? Uh, one is 32, the other is 26, right? And they've been together for six years, and it's growing. Now, before I get into all of their specifics, let me let you know right now that uh, – Right now, it's going to be a little bit that way because I want to make sure that their voices are heard. Okay, now let me say my disclaimer right now. Uh, this show is for mature audiences, and the language and subject matters are not appropriate for children or anyone who is not mature to handle the subject matter. So your listening discretion is advised. Again, your listening discretion is advised. Now, you know I have a potty mouth. I make no excuses for it, so if you guys ain't ready to hear four letter words and carry on, I advise you to turn off now. I, I appreciate you. I understand if it's not your kind of language, but I'm not going to hold back, okay? So just consider yourself warned. And also, if you're listening to this at work, uh, you may want to keep the volume down or put some headphones on because this may not be appropriate for the, for the office place, okay? And that's just looking out for you to keep your job, girl. Y'all ain't going to be blaming me, yeah? All right. Now, uh, let me say thank you to all of my sponsors who are helping me do what it is that I do here and bringing it, bringing it to you the way that we do. Trade Day Management and PR Firm. At Trade Day, enjoy a touch of Southern hospitality with a universal appeal. For all of your public relations and entertainment management needs, contact Travion Davenport at 678-523-3088. Again, that's 678 523 3088, or you could email her at tradepr at gmail.com, tradepr, T-R-E-A-D-A-Y-P-R, at gmail.com. Pharaoh's Treasure Box, fine art, unique jewelry, and sensational 3D silk floral arrangements, creations by TAPS. For all of your decorative needs, contact Pharaoh's Treasure Box at 248 248- 688-5178 or 5179, 248-688-5178 or 5179, or you could email at Pharaoh's Treasure Box at Comcast.net. Again, Pharaoh's Treasure Box at Comcast.net. Parisian Wine Productions, music to lighten your spirits and lift your souls, specializing in gospel and inspirational house dance music. For all of your Christian setting needs, contact Paris Hairston Production Consultant and CEO at 347-406-7734, 347-406-7734. Seven seven three four, or email at Paris four two two six eight at yahoo dot com. Paris four two two six eight at yahoo dot com. Life Fellowship of Christ Ministries. 
Live in Freedom Everywhere, L-I-F-E. Reverend James Coleman is the leader and founder of the Ecumenical Social Justice Ministry, brought forth to free the oppressed, and introducing a fresh approach to the Christ consciousness. Contact Reverend Coleman at 313-833-9278. Again, 313-833-9278. Or you could email him at mustardcole at yahoo.com. Mustardcole at yahoo.com. Ichum Vidal Couture. Enjoy high fashion with a luxurious twist. Step into the future with fresh, innovative couture. Designed by Miss Michi DeVille. For more information, contact Michi at 313-996-9807, 313-996-9807, or go to facebook.com forward slash Michi DeVille. That's facebook.com forward slash M-I-C-H-I-E-E-D-E-V-A-L-E. The Big Brothers Network, the BBN, a new online web magazine designed to show the world the class and style of the debonair man of size and his admirers. The first edition was launched this past Memorial Day weekend. For more information, please contact Big Daddy Tony Brown at Tony at BigBrothersNetwork.com. Tony at B-I-G-B-R-O-T-H-A-S Network.com. If you want to see the magazine, just go to Big Brothers Network. Network.com and the latest edition of the magazine is up for your perusal. All right. Right now, that there is my list of sponsors. I'm looking for more, of course. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please email me at dishing tea with big meach at gmail.com. Once again, that's dishing tea with big meach at gmail.com. I thank you, thank you, thank you to all of my sponsors for all of your love and your wonderful support. Okay? Now, before I bring on my guest, let me give you a couple of statistics that I found, and I thought this was rather interesting because there's a new study that just came out last month, okay, and according to the study, it was done in San Francisco, and this study uh, suggests that of the LGBT community, It says uh, this study was conducted by the um, the gender the Center for Research on Gender and Sexuality at San Francisco State University. Okay, and the research leader, her name was Colleen Huff, and she has found that within her limited study there, uh, according to Huff. Of the male couples that were surveyed, 47% reported being in open relationships, 45% were monogamous, and the remaining 8% disagreed about what they were. Now, that there just came out last month. So if all of the, now mind you, she only surveyed folks that were in the San Francisco Bay Area. But here's something else that I found to be rather interesting. This study here has come from, uh, this this was information that was found, and I'm taking this from uh, the Apologist blog, and he wrote this on August 7th of this year. And he says that in the research that he's done, uh, bearing a complete redefinition of marriage, which is which is what many, including myself, are convinced in take, is taking place. This data suggests that the, the popular view of monogamous sex, same, same-sex marriage is absurd from the homosexual perspective. Of the homosexual populace, less than 3% even act monogamous. But so many have been pushing for the right to marry. And after reading these statistics, such a push seems to be inconsistent. He goes on to quote his sources. He says that the uh, A.B. Bell and M.S. Weinberg in their classic study of male and female sexuality found that 43% of white male homosexuals had sex with 500 or more partners, with 28% having 1,000 or more sex partners. He continues to say that in their study of the sexual profiles of 2,583 older homosexuals published in the Journal of Sex Research, 
they have found that only 2.7% claim to have sex with only one partner with only one partner. The most common response was given by the 21.6% of the respondents was having a hundred um, a hundred and one to five hundred lifetime sex partners. Mm. He also quotes that the book in the book the male couple authors by uh, David P Mc, McRider and Andrew M Madison. They reported that in a study of 156 males in homosexual relationships lasting for um, lasting from one to seven years, that only seven couples have totally exclusively have totally exclusive sexual relationships, and these men have all been together for less than five years. And he stated another way. All couples with relationships lasting more than five years have incorporated some provision for outside sexual activity in the relationship. And he also says that in the book uh, In Male and Female Homosexuality by M. Sager and E. Robbins, they have found that the average male sexual live-in relationship lasts between two and three years. Isn't that diabolical? Isn't that rather interesting, interesting, interesting? Now, there's something else that I found here out of the psychology today by Dr. Joe Court. Dr. Joe Court is out of Detroit, my hometown, and he's an openly gay psychologist. And he went through it to talk about this whole thing about marriage and relationships and commitment and stuff have now taken on new definitions. Yes. He says that a lot of folks who claim it to be monogamous end up making up the rules as they go along. But Well, we are monogamous, and we may have threesomes here and there, but we don't have sex with each other but, you know, independently of one another. We have to include everyone, so it's all inclusive with us. So that there I found to be interesting, 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 interesting. So I gave all this right now because with my guest coming on the show, as I said earlier, uh, I want to take a look at today's youth. The LGBT culture, honey, we, you know, some of us, us old fogies, because I'm 40, y'all, y'all know that, um, we have gotten to a point now to where the younger generation seem to not have a voice. You know, the old fogies don't pay attention. The, the new kids on the block, honey, they come up and um, they have... Uh, um, you know, they're looking to find their own way. And so here in LGBT living, we have not found or heard of the youth being in monogamous relationships or whatever. Gay culture uh, facilitates us. You know, having that divide and conquer syndrome, honey. It's all about going out and getting as much dick in the ass and as, as you can, you know. And the, the higher your numbers are, supposedly the better you are or the more status, or the, uh, you know, that you have with being um, um, a person of, of gay culture. So in understanding that, um, here I'm going to... Uh, bring in my guests, honey. They go by Marco and Kishan. One, Marco is 32, Kishan is 26. They have been monogamously together for the last six years, and they are growing. And when I let them tell their story, honey, I find it very fascinating because you don't hear this in, in the young gay culture. You, we don't even hear this, period. You know, with gay children, uh, with gay children, or with our heterosexual counterparts at this young age. So, without any further ado, let me bring in Keyshawn and Marco. Hey, babies, how y'all doing? What's going on, baby? <laughs> it's all lovely, honey. You know, I am everything, and everything is me, honey. Giving honor to the omniverse for such wonderful blessings and for letting you guys come on. And uh, share with me, you know, some things. So with that, my darlings, let's get right into it. Now, you heard these old statistics that I was just quoting. And for the most part, I have to say that what's been offered, you guys have just shattered um, those statistics, or at least are in that rare percentage that a lot of us don't give credit to. 
when I was telling that you guys were coming on and, and giving folks a little bit of the background of this, I said, well, they've been in a relationship for six months monogamously. And six every years. person, I guess six, I was years. six years. Six years. I said six years. I'm, I'm Okay, don't get me wrong. Every time I said that, everybody, everybody has looked at me and crossed their eyes and have sat up there and said, really, monogamously, for real, for real. You know, oh, they just playing. Oh, I got to hear this. Oh, something ain't right with that because, no, somebody lying. Somebody, somebody. And so now what I want to do, I want to take, before we get into who lying and who ain't, let's start at the beginning of how you two came together and what this means to all of you. Okay, this is Marco. Um, I moved to Atlanta in 2000. When I came to Atlanta, I was more of the club kid, partying, going to the balls, walking balls and things like that. Did all of the Atlanta stuff, did the patches and everything like that. So I found myself in and out of different relationships with people who said that they were interested in having relationships but really wasn't. So I ended up meeting Keyshawn through his brother. And when I met Keyshawn, I was like, oh, he's a little young, but, you know, he's cool. So he was more like one of my friends. We were able to be friends before we started dating. So at that point, I think this was probably 2003, we end up moving in together as friends, and I had some other friends that moved in with me. And it was just like, I'm like, okay, I'm looking for love, but I'm looking in all of the wrong places. I guess the person that I was actually in love with was right there in front of my face. So that's mm-hmm. how we actually Aww. started dating. And I'll let, I'll let him give some input on that. Right. Go ahead, on, uh, Keyshawn. Okay. Me, um, I grew up, born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, it's a Grady baby. I'm not trying to sound ghetto or nothing, but I'm a Grady baby. I am from Atlanta. And my point for saying it is, I, you know, I grew up there, and, you know, the whole gay scene. I did have an older brother that, you know, was in a lifestyle, so any time I could go with him, I would take, I mean, anytime he would take me with him, like, to clubs and things like that, I would go. And the thing that turned me off was it just seemed like everybody was about sex, and it got to one point where everybody in the club either had this person or had that person. And I, I wasn't going to be labeled as somebody had me, and, you know, that, that's just not comfortable with me. So I, I wouldn't let nobody in too close right away unless I, you know, felt comfortable. When me and Marco met, he was, you know, he was a little older, but he was a cool person. He always looked out for me, and we always, when we talked about general stuff, we always came to some kind of agreement or had some understanding for some weird weird way. And it it just meshed together (laughs) We've just always been on the same accord from the beginning. Hmm. On the same accord. Those are spiritual words right there, honey. I'll get into that later. But, <laughs> but see, here's the thing. Um, at such a young age, what was it that kept you saying to yourself, all right, let me keep my integrity together. I like how you said I didn't want to be one of the ones that was labeled at the club. Oh, I know oh, somebody didn't have me up in here. Because, you know, just to preface that, most of us who are club kids and have been in the clubs, I used to go to the club seven days a week. Wherever there was one oh. open, I was there. However, how okay, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Twisting and twirling and kicking and splitting and carrying on, sweating out my fresh perm, honey, because that was what, what we did back in the day. And, yes, it, would, it became burdensome because even if you were single and wanted to go out, even if you were looking for a date or whatever, it was always somebody there. Basically, everybody had everybody at the club. So, you know, you didn't want to be in those particular numbers because you couldn't call nobody a hoe because you just as much of a hoe because you didn't have this right. child, too. So right. what was it that kept your integrity together when you two said, okay, we're going to do this, and you said, okay, we're going to just be the two of us? What kept that? 
I would have um, to say, seeing that, you know, a few of uh, our mutual friends end up um, um, catching HIV, AIDS, and then dying from that. And after seeing that, it's like, okay, is being in this lifestyle that serious? Is it that serious for you to, you know, play Russian roulette with your life? Because at that time, you know, it's the chat line, it's Adam for Adam, BGC, and all these other websites that you go on, and everybody on there, well, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for that, when all actuality, it always turns out to sex. So it was like, okay, I'm more than just, you know, a sexual being, you know, if I'm going to get have sex with somebody, it's going to be, you know, some type of connection, not just wham, bam, thank you. Have a good day. No, it wasn't like that. So from my point of view, it was more like, okay, I'm looking for somebody that I can share my life with, not share my sexual parts with. Mm. All right, Key, break it down, Key. I need to hear you. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm sorry. What was the question again? That's all right, baby. I was saying, what was it that keeps your integrity? Because you started oh, okay, off yeah, saying, okay, yeah. The thing for me was, it's just like with everybody getting sick. It was, you know, it's more to life than that, and you can't find nobody with any substance. And you go, you know, you go out and you bust a nut and you know have a good time. But after you bust that nut, then what is is awkwardness? You feel like you don't have to somebody you don't know. You don't know what they got because, you know, you were thinking fast or you're looking at their body. You know, their physical attraction, but you don't know everything about them. And for me, it was just not worth it. I mean, I got to deal. I, and for me, it was like I would be dealing with guilt, and I couldn't live that down, and nothing was worth that to me. So I, if I can't deal with what I got, then I'll just be alone. And that's mm. how I see. Okay, then let me ask y'all this because I, I we don't hear this kind of talk from folks in your generation of being, you know, LGBT. What is it that has you there? You know, I, I, I don't. I think I think basically what I'm trying to say is, honey, y'all just sound like y'all old spirits. Okay, if I just get real, because. You sound like somebody who, at my age, you know, we done been through the meal and done been heartbroken 15 times and, oh, Lord, have mercy. You know, I tried this and I tried that, and I had to learn to come into myself to that realization. But you're coming out of the jump like that. What do you feel attributes to that? Because your generation of gay folks, we don't hear that. You know, 26-year-olds, hell, when I was 26, we were still bopping. Now, I was slowing down, but we were still bopping at the clubs, and it was still about status. And see, and see y'all, your generation is the ball children. Now, everybody is balling and, 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 and stunting to get the latest outfit to go walk face and this, that, and the other. So how right. is it that you've been able to not get caught up in gay culture and just live your life as a gay man? Uh, do you want to go first or I'll go first? Well, um. Uh, from my point of view, it's more like, okay, yeah, you know, the club scene, the ball this, the ball that. But then at the end of the day, once you leave that ball at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, you know, all the money that you spent on, you know, that outfit to walk face, you know, and you didn't win grand prize. So now you're <laughs> walking out of there, you know, with no money. And you going home, you know. And nine times out of ten, I done been to – they apartment, they live in Buckhead, sleeping on the air mattress on the floor, mm-hmm. baloney in the refrigerator, not with bottled water. And I mean, it's like, what what do you have to show for? Okay, yeah, you walk you walk that category, you may got your tens, but you didn't win grand prize, so now you you can't do nothing else. You don't spend your light bill money. You don't have your rent money together. You keep getting evicted. Now you're stunning different people's names and doing all this other stuff. I mean. Time fly by when you're doing all that, and then when you wake up and realize, you know, you're sleeping on somebody's couch, and it's like, what, 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 what have I been doing? Where's my life? What do I have to show for living? So, coming to that realization, it was like, okay, I want something out of life. You know what I'm saying? Born and raised in Chicago, you know, my parents were hardworking parents. You know, they were together from the time that they were 16 till my dad died in 2007. So it was like, 
seeing that, you know, I guess that was instilled in me to be more relationship oriented. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. I played the field and everything like that, but it was like to me, you know, it's more relationship oriented, and it, that's what's in, instilled in me. You know, I see my parents, you know, go through their ups and downs, but at the end of the day, they was ride or die for each other. Right. And that's what I was looking for. And after seeing him, to be honest with you and all of your listeners, when I met him, it was like I was more, he was younger. So it was like me being around him, I was grooming him to actually be, you know, the person that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. That may sound bad to others and good to some, but, I mean, it was like, okay, let me put this out here that, you know, this is the type of person that I'm looking for, this is the type of person that I want. Even though, you know, it wasn't 100%, but, you know, you're not going to find nobody with 100% of the qualities and the things that you want. And that's why you find a lot of people in this lifestyle being single because they're looking for the next, you know, uh, the next Chris Brown or Charlie Jones or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're looking for. And at the end of the day, right. yeah, you may snatch one of them up, but guess what? That attitude is nasty. They probably don't want to work. I mean, they have no social skills or nothing like that. So how can you... Just the lazy side of that person, oh, well, he fears so. It don't matter, and the sex is good, but at the end of the day, what else do you have? Y'all have nothing else in common. They have nothing nothing to bring to the table. So it's like, what the hell? Find somebody that's compatible to you. And it's not all about looks. Yeah, you need somebody that's easy on the eye when you turn over in the morning, but still, it don't have to be that top model. Mm. Okay, now here here we go, here we go, because now let me go here first before I go into the aesthetics of the relationship, because I want to get into that whole business side that I I swear you guys have become a role model for me, because I, when I listen to you two, it, it, it just does my heart. Joe, I tell y'all, y'all my new little nephews, honey, I'm big, I'm just, I'm just ain't seen, honey, y'all ain't all. Okay, sitting up there holding my chest out and shit, those are my children. But here we go. Okay. Let's go to your generation of of haters and naysayers and those who are looking to uh, tear it down and to destroy it. Okay, even even I won't even say your your generation. I'm just gonna say the haters, period, because folks who are you know just gay folks, period, who see happy couples, you know they feel as though they zoom in on the attack. How is it? This is a two part question. The first part is, I just quoted these statistics saying that folks who are in these relationships want to then experiment and explore. They bring in the third. They bring in the threesome and do it within themselves because we agreed upon this, that, and the other. And I'm not saying that's wrong or that's bad, but you guys, I, I, knowing you the way that I know you, I've come to know you, that doesn't seem to be your M.O. So how is it that you keep that M.O. together? With, with with understanding that a part of the relationship. And number two, how do you what what are your defense mechanisms with all of your haters, those who come in here to block, those who come in here to flirt, those who come in here to intercept and think that they can break down some shit. Okay, it's like keep it fresh. Keep your relationship fresh when it comes to, you know, sex life and stuff like that. Everybody say, Well, I'm a top, I'm a bottom, I'm first do I don't do this, I don't do that. If you're in a relationship, if you're out to please your mate and your mate is out to please you, ain't, you don't have to worry about nobody from the outside coming in. Yes, we, we come, we go out to the club every now and then, and, you know, people flirt with us and things like that. But at the end of the day, because we talk and communicate so much, it's like it doesn't phase us because every night when we lay in the bed to go to sleep, it's like we're having a conversation. If somebody came to me and tried to talk to me and said, well, this and this and this and that, I'm going to go to him and I'll be like, well, check it out. This is what happened, you know. Such and such said this and such and such said that. And then, you know, he know about it. We laugh it off and be done with it. So the same thing with him. If something happens to him in that situation, he's going to come to me and we're going to talk about it and we're going to laugh it off. But we know that we need to keep an eye on that person. Mm-hmm. Not to let that person in our inner circle because when you let some people into your inner circle and past relationships, it just breaks everything down because from my point of view, I don't understand how can you say you're going to let this third person into the relationship. But like I heard a scenario uh, when we was talking that um, I come home from a hard day at work and they at home and they done, you know, bust they nuts together and both of them tired and I've been at work horny all day now. I can't get done. So now I'm looking crazy. 
Why would that make you feel? Um, now that's the way to put it out there. <laughs> Go ahead, Keith. Come on in. I was saying that's a hell to the norm moment. Come on. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not going to do something. <laughs> but no, okay. if, if to me, if you at the end of the day, if you want something to work, everything takes work. If you want something to work, your work get it. Don't just throw in the towel. If you want your relationship to have substance and build upon, then you'll build upon it. But don't just pack your bag and leave. As soon as the first thing happens, you're gonna be running for the rest of your life. And that's what people Ooh. don't understand. Okay, everybody got to pay a Nike. <laughs> okay, let the truth be told this. When we first started dating, I was more of the sexual being. I wanted to have sex all the time and everything. And he was more uh, more reserved because, you know, he hadn't had that many relationships or he hadn't had that many sexual partners. So it was like he was still, you know, new to actually having sex with men. So, you know, I took that upon myself. You know, I was like, okay, I'm going to slow down. So then... You know, that happened for like two years, and then um, he unleashed this sexual demon, and it's like, oh, what the hell is this? And I come, I, I done turned around, and I became the one that, oh, sex is a job. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, it was like, in the beginning, it, that's how it was with him, but then the road Ooh, was hard, so it was he like, let that, okay. he done turned a part of the bell combo out on you, honey. Yeah. <laughs> you. <Yo. laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on? So then, you know, it was going on good. You know, we was both sexual beings for two years, and then all of a sudden my my drive went down, and his was still up because, you know, his just got turned on. So it was like, okay, so it's been plenty of nights. What do you say? I was 21. <laughs> 21 and laying next to my boyfriend every day. Hell to the year. You better roll over and get it cracking. <laughs> well, I'll try for getting it cracking. All right, children. <laughs> but that's the that's the beauty of relationships. Now, see, now it's fun to talk about all of that because most folks want to attribute relationship to the sexual aspect of it. Mm-hmm. But let's go here because see, you guys are building your empire. You're building your brand. You're building your legacy. I want to talk right. about that because okay. see, this is the part that I find most fascinating because even heterosexual couples – still have not gotten to this particular point where you guys have actually sat down, planned, and strategized how the relationship is going. You know, you you plan to do this. You plan to buy the house. You plan to get the car. You plan to go to school. You plan to have the kids. Let's talk about that. What in that said, okay, this is the things that we need to talk about to move forward. How did you guys know that this is what this is? Talk to me. Everything. Go, go ahead. Hey, Marco, Marco. Yes. Okay. The way we was, we always talked about stuff that we wanted out of life. What do you want? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And we agreed on house, car, kids, school. So we worked, you know, we're going to do this first, you know, put stuff in order. We're going to do this first and do this and do this. Knock it out like this. And it just went from there because we planned early, and being that we talked so much about everything, it wasn't, you know, no breakdown of miscommunication. So if something did go not according to plan, roll on to the next, come up with something new to keep this plan going. If we had to add something to it or take something away, we did. But that's how we always did things, even with, like, Everything, like with bills and family members, just everything that um, I would say involved our life, really. Mm. Okay. Marco? Well, it was always the fact that, you know, once our family figured out, you know, we was in a relationship, Everybody was, we didn't have any kids. Everybody was like, our nieces and nephews, oh, you can treat my my kids as your kids. You can buy them this, you can buy them that. Okay, but we still want kids ourselves. So we sat down and, you know, we talked about it, and then at one point in time we actually select a, a young lady that we wanted to have a child by. Um, I end up having sex with that young lady. We end up having a child. We have a four-year-old son. 
that we share custody of, take care of them together, and everything like that. Now, I'm actually in the airport right now on my way to Michigan to go to school. I will be commuting back and forth from Michigan because we do own our own house here in Atlanta, and he's working to put me through school. So it's like the communication that we have and the relationship that we have is like, okay, so at some point in our relationship, I was the one that was up, and, you know, he was down. I was there to pick him up and make sure everything was taken care of and he needed anything, he had anything. We have joint bank accounts. I mean, we have separate savings accounts so that we can have our own stuff that we need to do on the side, but mostly everything is joint. Our checks go into the same account and everything that we do is joint because I look at some of the heterosexual relationships and everything is like, my, 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 my. You married. Why is everything your, your, yours instead of joint? I didn't understand that. So I was like, I never wanted to be like that. So once I figured out, you know, that that was the person that I wanted to be with, then, you know, I was like, okay, no holes barred, everything's cut off, everything is a shared entity. So it's like building and building your empire and just making it bigger, 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 and stronger and stronger and stronger so that, you know, no haters can come through and knock it down. And I feel like at this point in time in our relationship, that's where we are. And, I mean, everything that we have put down on paper in our little notebook planners that we both have, we just check it off the list. Next thing, no next thing, next thing, next thing. Really? Okay, now, 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 you know, now, now, hold up, because, you know, you just done dropped a bombshell. Let's go back a few sentences. Okay. You said we plan to have this child, and we selected oh, the mother. <laughs> okay. Now, you know how Kate... You, you said it to where we were going to skate past that, honey. And okay, now, uh, Chrissy Yamaguchi. Okay. That bitch did that figure eight, honey. But, oh, no, I got to come back and look at that triple axel. Okay. The dynamic of that. Okay. I don't want to get into the particulars because the baby is here and this, that, and the other. But the dynamic of that, you know, to y- y- y'all agreed upon this. What was it? Okay. Yeah, just just take me through the mental dynamics of all of that because here, quote unquote, and on the tech, and I'm gonna play devil's advocate here for those who want to get real shady because you know how queens get and say, "Well, I told you they weren't monogamous." What was that dynamic, and and, and let the kids know what what that meant for y'all. Okay, the reason why we went went at it that route is because if you want to have a child and you want the child to have a actual physical and family connection to either partner, you're going to have to go at that route unless you're going to spend all that money because it costs $50,000 and up, you know, to go the other route, to have it inseminated and all that other stuff. So we had to sit down and, you know, we had to actually talk about this, okay? Now, we can save up and do it this way, but if we save up and do it this way, it's going to be years and years down the line. But if we go this route, then, you know, hey, it's something that we will have to do, and, I mean, we can get it done. We sat down, we talked about it, we, it happened, and that was it. There was no type of connection or uh, 3 o'clock in the morning booty calls or anything like that. <laughs> it, it was just there. It was a business deal. A contract was signed, and that's how it was. It's all about business. It was nothing about pleasure. It was wham, bam, thank you, have a good day. Nine months later, taking care of her, doing her pregnancy. Nine months later, sign the papers, the baby is yours. That's it. Now, we are on, on the other side of that is that that connection was to me. Now, we said um, after um, I graduate from school, then, you know, we're looking to have a daughter, and that connection is going to be to him. So at the end of the day, we'll both have connection, and we'll both be able to say, well, yes, we do have a biological child. Wow. You know, I'm fascinated with that, right? I'm fascinated <laughs> with that because, well, the, this, this is the thing, because, see, what I'm hearing, I'm hearing the business plan of it. I'm hearing the thought that goes into it. I'm hearing, you know, every, all, of, all, of the, all of the particulars and all of the ramifications that goes with this that we don't hear anywhere. You know what I'm saying? We don't hear that. All we know is baby mamas, baby daddies, baby mama drama, baby daddy drama, underage pregnancies, you know, all all that kind of, that's all we know about babies today. You know, and, and, and to understand 
that this had become a business decision because just like you said, okay, it costs to do it to have artificial insemination. That costs, and we couldn't afford it. And this, basically, you know, so wow, that's a very fascinating, fascinating aspect. And 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 to be so young, see, that's the part that's that's just fucking with me, because y'all got this so early. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got this so early, and it's working. It's working. Ah. Uh, Oh, see, I did my babies. I just love my I want to touch on something, too, that he had said earlier. Like, he said he seen his parents, like, they was married young, and they just, you know, stuck by each other's side. And my parents were the same way. My parents are still married, and they still by each other's side. And they, I seen them go through, you know, lose, burying a child and all of that. So, and they just stayed by each other's side. And, that's how I wanted to be. I wanted to have somebody in my life that I knew through at the end of the day I can at least say that I have that person there. Mhm. Well, that's you it. know what, well, I'm I'm gonna throw this out there because see I hear something that's a common thread that I'm going to touch on and this may be a slap in the face to a lot to all my single parents out there. However, what I'm hearing is is that you guys had an example of what a marriage should be from your parents. And so you're patterning yourselves or wanting to have the same kind of relationships that you've seen in your household. Right. right. And so to take that dynamic and understanding that, when you're around your friends, does that often show and why they're single? and why some of the decisions that they make, you know, versus, you know, for those who come from single-parent households that you hang with versus those who still have two-parent households, have you guys noticed that interaction or, or that as a factor with, with a lot of your, your uh, compadres, if you will? Most of my friends that came from single-family homes are, like, my male and female friends are either single single parents or single themselves. And most of the ones that came from, you know, uh, with both parents in the household, you know, they're in a relationship. I'm not going to say that it's the best of a relationship, but they're in a relationship. So I really do think that that actual example and growing up in that household really has something to do and play with, you know, the morals that are in, instilled in us. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Now, let's, let's, let's look at this dynamic. Okay, when you're coming into the relationship, when you guys say that you wanted this, you know, we sat down and we planned this. We got notebooks. We got our daily planners. We're constantly going over this and constantly going over that. The work that's involved in that, the time that's spent in that, you know, particularly when everybody got to work and you got to do this and you got the babies to take care of, you got nieces and nephews over that you consider your, to be your kids, you got your own son. You know, when you look at all that, how do you guys map out the time? Because a lot of folks will say, oh, okay, that's cute. But, you know, hell, everybody, somebody must not be working or somebody lazy or whatever. How do y'all find the time? Because I know both of y'all work. Uh, you know, just to get a little personal, I know both of y'all work. You work long hours. And then now that you're finna get ready to go to school, Marco, you know, that whole dynamic, you know, how do you guys map out that time to say this is what we need for us? Or is it just that simple? I mean, it just it just comes easy to us now because it's like, okay, we open our book and look at the past year, three years ago, and look at the notebook at the things that we wanted to do and see the check marks that we have checked off. And it's like, wow, we met those goals at that point in time. We give ourselves monthly goals, um, six-month goals, and yearly goals. And as, as we... Um, meet those goals, we just check it off and, hey, it's time for something new. You know, we got to keep it moving because, you know, like we wanted to buy a house. We got tired of renting. And, you know, we said, okay, let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and purchase this home. We went ahead and purchased the home. Now, at this point in time, when we purchased that home, we felt like that was our foundation. That was our foundation that no one could take away from us. That is, if nothing else binds us together, that's what binds us together. Like with the, the whole same-sex marriage. We feel like that. We don't have time for that because 
One month is legal, the next month is not. One month is legal, the next month is not. We don't need that piece of paper to tell us that, hey, we can we, we can be together. Because we've been together for six years, so why do we have to, you know, go out here and get married just to, you know, solidify our relationship? We don't need that. Okay, but you know what? <laughs> I just clicked. Miss Michi just clicked. We all just clicked over here in the studio, honey. Okay. We don't need that piece of paper, okay, to say what we already know. I love that. I so fucking love that. That there is so real right there. That's so real. That is so real. Oh, okay. Yeah, kudos. Click it. Click it. Click it. Okay. Just, ah, click, click, click. Okay. <laughs> because he works listening. for him. Go ahead. Go ahead. He he works for a company that's um, internationally. So with that, oh. with the company that he works for, that that business, you know what I'm saying, domestic partnership. I get all the same benefits as a wife would. He's in okay. his career, so I get all the same um, benefits as a wife or a husband would. I'm on his medical, dental. Um, I get the fly for free. So I mean, it's like. What, what else do I need? Why do I need this piece of paper to tell me that we're binded together? Okay, 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 because I got everything, honey. Okay, I have the spousal benefits. Okay, what? please, I'm recognized at the, at the at the office party as the spouse, the significant other. Okay. How you doing? <laughs> when I come up in this motherfucker, you better recognize when I say I'm having lunch with my husband. Okay. <laughs> How you doing? Okay, when I walk up in this damn hospital room, you better understand how I'm the one that makes the decision when he can. Because okay. I have that piece of paper. <laughs> because I got that paper. Okay, I have that paper. I don't need the other right. one. Because right. I got the so important that, one that say I'm just, I can make decisions. Because uh-huh. that other paper, that other paper is not going to stand any grounds in the state of Georgia where we live. In California, yeah. yeah. State of Georgia, no. What we got to do, dodge here and dodge there? Okay, it works over here. It doesn't work over there. No. Why? You go the other legal way. You got to do your research. When, and that's one thing that I don't understand about people these days. They don't do research. They just jump off the wind and say, okay, I want to do this. I have none any research, so you don't know what the outcome is going to be. With us, we research and research, research and research, and then we make our decision. What do you say? And it's just not no... It's not just no one-sided, well, well, I think we're going to do this. No, because if I come out and say, well, I think we're going to do this, people are going to come back around and say, well, what about this and this and this? And then I'll be like, oh, you know what, I didn't think about that. Let me go back to the table and find out about this and this and this. And then at the end of the day, that full circle becomes closed, and it's like we made that decision together. Right. Okay, now here we go. Here we go. Because, see, now I'm going to start with the I'm in your business question. Okay, <laughs> because here here's the thing that that um, is a is a topic within our culture that a lot of us don't embrace, and I want to hear how you guys deal with this as a couple, and that is domestic violence, and we don't embrace that because as men we're all taught. That we don't have him, we don't share emotions unless it's aggression. Everything is done with coming to fisticuffs, honey. And we can't solve it. Fuck it, I got to whoop that ass. How do you guys make not make that a part of your relationship? And how do you guys solve disagreements when you get angry with one another, and and keep it from not going to? We got to take it to the streets. Keyshawn, go ahead and get that. Hello? Key? Did you lose him? No, he's still yeah. there. Yeah, I'm sorry. Children. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, it is 2 o'clock. Yeah, pick up the baby. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, what it is, like, just basically talking. Like, if if I get mad about something, Nine times out of ten, before I even could speak, he would already know anyway. Um, like, we have maybe one fight, and this was like maybe a year into our relationship. And 
that one fight we had, I had left and I uh, went to my brother's house, and um, we we called and we spoke, and we you know we realized you know we had something that this is not how it's gonna be if we if we got anger and we upset about something we gonna talk. I mean that's what we did with everything else. So why not talk about a disagreement? It would be dumb mm. to you know talk about planning life goals and shit like that, but you can't talk when you're having a disagreement. That's that's it. So that's what we, you know, that's what we did, and that worked out too. And that was one and only time. Okay. Marco. All right, now. Okay, right, because you know I was going there. Marco. (laughs) Marco. Hold on. Well, it's it's like, um, when it comes to that, it's like, yes, in my household growing up, I seen, you know, my parents argue. Um, I seen my parents have, um, I think, maybe two fights. The first time, yeah, you know, but the second time it was like, it was really wild because, I mean, I don't condone domestic violence, but, yeah, my, my dad put his hands on my mom, and she took his street. She cracked the bottle over the radiator and cut him all up in his back. So after that, it was like, he's not going to try no more. So it was like, after seeing that growing up, it was like, nah, you know, this is not me. And then when we end up having our confrontation, it was like, I was more hurt by, you know, I'm like, we're supposed to love each other. And we fighting like this. This don't make no sense. This really don't make no sense. I mean, we, our communication process is supposed to be wide open, and this doesn't make any sense. So after we sat down and talked about that, we never – you know, ever came back to that, that that point in our lives ever again. It was just like everything because our communication is so open. We can talk about anything. If we're driving down the street and there's a cute person on the corner, oh, he's cute, and keep it moving. That's it. You know, there's no, oh, my God, oh, God, Lord, I'm mercy. I'm going to go get that number something. No, it's not that because we happy with each other. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, now here we go. Are you ready? You ready? Because you know the bitches want to be in your business. You know the bitches want to be in your business. And you know where I'm going. Miss Happy. We have a fascination in gay culture, honey, to always want to know who top and who bottom and who, you know, oh, y'all lesbians and carrying on, honey, because y'all ain't this. And, oh, my God, you know, you ain't real trade. And how do y'all get around all that bullshit? Um, I guess because everybody wants to know. I mean, they're inquiring minds. I mean, it's like, okay, whatever. I, I, I always say, um, I'm going to take it to Ray J and Kim Kardashian, wait for the sex tape. Ha! Ha! <laughs> 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 okay, wait a minute. I'm drinking a smoothie. <laughs> Oh, I was having my smoothie honey, that went down not so smooth that I'm laughing through it. <laughs> <laughs> he throw you a curveball, did he? <laughs> well, not so much as a but You know, I, I wanted to, to, to take that question there because, as I said, you know, gay culture is very gratuitous and gay culture is very superficial. Okay. Right. And in our culture, you know, we get so bombarded with got to make sure that we got a man and a real man and, oh, he got to be this kind of man. You know, and and even with sexual activity, we want all that to be reflected. You know, if I'm I'm calling myself a strict bottom, honey, then he got to be all top and blase, yakety, smackety. And then when it comes down to saying that we want true love and we want relationship, and we want somebody to do this and to be that and to this and to all that, then we, you know, we end up missing out on what's true because we put so much, so much on the aesthetics, the physical aesthetics, right. to where we don't look at the whole picture, you know. And on top of it, I'm, a, I'm one who believes, child, if, when, if you trick him, that's one thing. If you are scallying and things, okay, then you're supposed to get what you, what you say you want. Okay, if I'm a bottom and I say I want to pop because I'm just trying to get one off, okay. But that tricking is a whole separate entity. But when we are in true relationship 
and I say you're my life partner, my life partner is supposed to do everything in his power to make sure that I'm happy and to keep right. me happy. And I him. So there is no such thing as top or bottom. It's in my book, when it comes down to being in the relationship, it's about making sure that my partner is happy and content with whatever it is that we do. And we just sit down here and watch porn together and talk out loud about it. And that makes me happy? Fine. Yeah. You know, whatever the case may be. So that, and, and I wanted to address that because I know I got listeners out there that are sitting up there wondering, okay, well, somebody got there and they're just trying to catch who the top or whatever by the sounds of your voices. And, or what you, okay, mm-hmm, yeah. You know, and you know how we do, how we get there. <laughs> and I'm a, the, thing I'm a, the thing I'm going to say about that is, and I'm going to leave it alone, that sex is good. Okay. All right, then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. <laughs> and if your and if your listeners will have seen us standing side by side, they wouldn't even be able to tell. Right. Well, be that as it may. And but see, my whole point is, there's nothing to tell. Just know we do what we do, and to keep each other happy. Now, whatever your imagination is, that's on you. Cause you right. ain't here, honey. You know what I'm saying? You ain't here. And, you know, the kind of games we play, honey, doesn't require an audience. Because y'all don't play like that. I mean, there's some of us who do, you know, who, who you know, that's a fetish. I don't know. That's, that's a whole nother show, honey. Right. You know. However, uh, we, 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 we are just making sure that folks understand the integrity of the relationship itself, you know. And mm-hmm. I want, I just want folks to, to get, if, if you had a message, the two of you had a message um, that your life is not, is not showing, okay, because we all lead by example, but if you had to talk and tell folks something in your generation of being in this culture, what would your message be? that your life is not saying? What would you say to, to young kids, you know, and to the generation that's coming after you? What would you say to them? It's not all about sex. Because once that nut is over with, what, then what you have? If you start off in the beginning with, okay, let's have sex, and then you have sex, and then you turn around and say, oh, um, let's have a relationship, what else do you have to offer that's supposed mm. to be the golden ticket. That's supposed to be what you hold on to and make sure that, you know, your emotional side is going to be compatible. Once you figure out the emotional side is compatible, then that's when you introduce sex into the relationship. Because if the emotional side is not compatible, it's nothing, it's nothing going to come out of it but sex. Mm. Okay. Okay, dig that. Dig that key. You got something on that one? Oh, he must be still dealing with the children. <laughs> okay. You did say it's 2 o'clock. I got to deal with these children. But, That's um, it. okay. But see, he, but now here, here's another, uh, another thing on it. And that is, uh, understand too, uh, respecting the relationship also in the business of it. What would you? What would? What would your? Uh, if you were to do a class or a seminar, or whatever. What would? What would you say to that to folks about? You know, planning everything and making sure that the that the the realms of communication are constantly open. You know, what what would your lesson be? I would I would let them know that you know, there is no my is when you in a relationship with somebody. When you're in a relationship with somebody, it's our business. So what's affecting you is going to affect me also in some point of fashion. So if it's bothering you, it's going to bother me at one point in time. Or if you have to deal with it, I'm going to have to deal with it in some way or some shape or some fashion. So I would say keep the lines of communication open at all times. If you're going through something, your partner needs to know what you're going through. If something is going on, your partner needs to know what's going on. You need to keep those lines of communication open at all times. And if you communicate like that, I mean, there's nothing or no one that can come in between that. 
if y'all truly say that y'all have love for each other like you say you do, then there is nothing nobody can do. I mean, I don't care if the finest person in the world came to you and said, hey, guess what, let's have sex. If you in love with that person that you've been with, at that point in time, you're going to be like, you know what, temptation is a motherfucker, but I'm not down for it. Dig it. Dig it. Okay. Now, now, see. Now, let, let, I want you to break down communication a little bit further, because we all know that it has become such a cliche. You know, keep the lines of communication open. But one of the things that we forget is that we also have to talk about the bad stuff, the stuff that I know if I say this is gonna hurt you. I know if. If, um, you know, this is not going to be a favorable conversation, you know, I know this is going to bring some kind of attitude out in you, and I really don't feel like dealing with that, you know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm just tired, but I think you ought to know. You know, how do Mm y'all get through those moments, and what would you say uh, to, to everyone on that particular level of communicating? Because it's more than just talking, it's also listening. So give me your thoughts on that. Right. Like you said, it's more than just talking, it's listening. Also, you have to be able to be that open ear for your um, partner. If if you're in this relationship and you're trying to communicate, you want your partner to be able to listen to you and give you positive feedback or feedback, period, whether it be positive or negative, because you need that. If, you're, if your partner just gives you all positive feedback, then – what what good is that doing for you if, if your partner is not telling you everything that's going on, or everything that, that you need to know about that, that actual situation? They just tell you, okay, everything is nice, everything is good, but it's a negative to that too, and your communication is not open enough for you to express that negative part, then I don't understand how you can say your actual communication circle is open. You have to be able to withstand the good and the bad. And if you have a strong foundation, it doesn't matter what you and your partner is talking about, whether it's good or bad, y'all will be able to get through it. Without the attitude and without the nonchalantness and all that, you will be able to get through it. Okay. Well, all right. Now, I said I was going to bring in the spiritual component of this later. And I have to bring it in now and introduce it because everything that – you have been discussing. I really, I you know, after learning you two and having y'all over for for a Moscato, which has become my new favorite. Thank you, baby. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> um, what I have learned is, I really and truly believe that this has just been completely ordained by the omniverse and by by uh, the infinite creator because of how everything is lined up. You guys really are actually living an example of what following a true spirit is. So what is your spirituality, uh, your personal spiritual walk, and how do you guys introduce that into the relationship uh, or keep it as a foundation? or how, where, where does it fit is the question. Our motto always been a, a family that prays together stays together. So at night, I mean, we pray together. And, I mean, that's, that's just how it's always been. I mean, we didn't come up in, you know, families that was, you know, into the church and things like that. I mean, us as me, myself, as growing up, my parents, they didn't go to church. But the kids had to go to church. So, I mean, that's how I got my spiritual sense. But with the relationship part of it, I mean, we just, you know, we rejoice and we celebrate together. We go to church. I mean, not going to say that we go to church every Sunday, but we do go to church. But on an evening basis, at base of the night before we lay our heads on that pillow, we do pray together. Mm. <laughs> All right, Florida and James, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all do my heart so proud, just so proud, honey, because I actually hear young folks, you know, getting a grip on this thing called life, and it's not just 
the whole superficial aspect of it, you know. Now, mm-hmm. let me let me ask this because uh other gay couples, you know, that are, that may be in your circle. Mhm. Did you find that sometimes you run across some kind of jealousies and things by them? You know, maybe you guys doing something that they ain't doing or maybe have caught on too quick. You know how we do? You know, right. when, when, you know we're all happy for one another and all look at the cheering and this, that. But when, when folks see you doing something that they felt they should have done and they old as hell, you know, <laughs> right. and they see that you've done something. For instance, I'm not a homeowner. I've never had, a, I've never had my own home yet. But it's not my time, and I know, and I understand that. But you guys, you you know, you you bought the home, honey. You've got the car. You know, you've got the children. Now, I don't have biological children either. You know, and I'm forty. So, with saying all that, those who are in your circle, do you find that y'all come across that sometimes with with kids just you know just hating because of no reason, you know, out of, out of jealousy or envy or anything like that, and they're already partnered and coupled and married and all that. That's why our circle has become small. Huh? Well, how about that? Because of that same reason. Because of that same reason. They feel like, you know, oh, because in the beginning, oh, they must be stunned. They must be writing checks. They must be doing this. Every time somebody doing something good, they have to be this. They have to be that. Everything that we have is in both of our names. We went to closing together and, and signed the deed to our home. The cars, everything that we do is together. The joint bank account, the light bill, the gas bill, everything. Both our names are on it. So, I mean, it's like I have a low tolerance for jealousy because just like I work and build on my empower, empire, you can do the same. I mean, if you need, you know, to take a, a look at me and see what I'm doing to build on yours, you can do that. But, I mean, it's time out for all of the hating because, and that's what I try to explain to them, why you wasting all that time and energy hating on me, I'm building my empire when you're lacking in yours. Okay. Wow. When you're lacking in yours. Wow. Wow. That is a very powerful sentence right there. That's a very powerful sentence. So now, here's the here is the 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 question. Now that you can see, you guys have such a foundation, and we've gone over some of your history. You know, with with your accomplishments, you've got the home, you've got school. Both of you guys are working. Well, you're going to school now, so now, you know, bitch, you know what? Let me say this because I wanted to hit you with a wet noodle real quick, cutely. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, but um, he's going to. I'm going to school, and he's going to support me through school. A bitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's sickening, everybody. I said, okay, I'm gonna hit this child with a wet noodle real hard. Okay, a big old lasagna noodle, a double stack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but. That is just darling, honey. Now, the question is, what is for the future? Because y'all have such a strong foundation. And believe it or not, a lot of folks will think that y'all have already hit Mecca. You know what I'm saying? They think okay. that this is it. So now, what what's to come in the future? We've already talked about, okay, you're ready for a second for uh, your son to have a sibling. So we've discussed that. So now, what what's the next step? You know, what what is, you know... The, the the next step for the, for the empire. Um, that um, that big house with the picket fence. We have a oh, we have a nice size house. We have a nice size house, but you know, three bedrooms, something that we can afford at this point in time. Since I won't be working a full time job, and we'll be living off you know his income and also our savings. So you know that big house, and you know that um. Range Rover and that S five hundred Mercedes Benz sitting in the driveway. Okay, well, well if that okay, if that only did y'all write that down in the damn notebook, Heifer? <laughs> twenty thirteen, boo boo, twenty thirteen. All right, okay. Now, did y'all hear that? They didn't even set the goal date. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but. But and, I, and I'm and I'm joshing with you, but you know I'm 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 so loving that because it actually put everything into perspective. If you can't just write it down and say, okay, this is what I want to do, you have to give yourself a goal line or 
some kind of deadline or something. That way it pushes you to move mm-hmm. forward. You know, I, I, I'm working on taking the word try out of my vocabulary because I always oh. say if you're trying something, honey, you'll be trying forever. you either going to do it or you ain't. Okay, right. so if you're doing it or you're attempting or it's always an action word there because you try set up for failure because I can be trying to do anything, but I ain't doing nothing but sitting up here watching One Life to Live on the TV. <laughs> okay, you know, it's, oh, I'm trying. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay, uh, yeah. But, but you're not doing. You're trying to do, but you're not doing. And that's what I'm so loving about this. Um, oh, okay. We got a call. Oh, oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. Somebody put their hand up, but then they've uh, uh, was going to ask a question, but no, that's somebody in the studio. She said, no, she's she good. Okay. Oh, okay. If they want to ask a question, tell them. I'm all ears. I'm here. Oh, so, ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She said, okay, if y'all want to ask questions, Right now, uh, press 1 if you're listening by telephone. If you are on computer and want to get in on the conversation, 347-205-9183. 347-205-9183 is the number to call. Um, oh, okay, the, the tea room, honey, is kind of closed today. Nobody's talking in the tea room. So, okay, I guess they, they really just wanted to hear what this is, because where are my naysayers at? Because all you bitches out there that were sitting up there giving me grief, honey, now is your opportunity to sit down and ask the questions yourselves. Because they what? were, oh, I'm telling they came for me hard. Oh, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Really monogamous, right. Mm-hmm. Somebody tipping and ain't talking and ain't doing. You know, I don't, I, even with these statistics, Okay. Miss <laughs> Lisa over in the studio said they got their notepads out. <laughs> okay. Oh, class is in session. Okay, exactly. <laughs> but even with the statistics, you know, I, I, you know, with this whole thing of ninety-seven percent of the folks, you know, are not of of, of gay folks are not monogamous. Only three percent, or less than three percent, are. Uh, but the whole question is, okay. There still is that 3% there of folks who are in that category. Why is it that we focus on those who are not because that 3% still exists? And it's, I don't know why it's so difficult for folks to wrap that around their head or wrap that around their mind frames or whatever. And I keep harping on the fact that your generation of LGBT, honey, we don't hear that because everyone's caught up in wanting to, to, to give status. You know, and get status, and 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 now this whole thing of walking these balls, honey, is is. Uh, I guess you got I have to, my you have to have and, you have to have money to walk them balls. When I tell you, you have to have money. When you want to be a club kid, you have to have money. You have to stay up with the latest fashion because you don't want to get slayed. And then if you get up there and walk the ball, like I used to walk dark skin face and schoolboy real, this grand prize a couple of times, how some Miyaki Mugler, but. You know, it's like, that costs money. <laughs> that takes money. Okay. And I mean, if you're spending all that money walking the balls and then you're going to sleep on somebody's couch, I don't understand that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not trying to be shady or throw no shade, but, I mean, it's just the truth. Build your empire. When you build your empire and then you go out and you do those type of things, you can do it with class. You can say, mm, this is me, this is what I want to do, this is my hobby. Not you go walk the ball, finish walking the ball at 6 o'clock in the morning, then get grand prize, then you going, taking a shower, getting on the couch, mm. or laying on the floor. No. Mm, not, not a pallet on the floor. And, you know, just spent um, $1,500, you know, this started to get this $1,500 gown or whatever, or right. these labels. Okay, I no. can't stand to get your ass a house, a place to go. No. <laughs> Hell, you can't even go get food stamps, child. Shit. <laughs> okay. I ain't got no bus But, you know, oh, shut up. Because, uh, hush, not the bus fare. <laughs> okay. Now, let me ask you this. You know, when you were got by yourself or get by yourself and you actually look over your relationship, 
and you have that moment to where, like, damn, you know, God actually sent me somebody who really loves me and cares for me. You know, when you, you know, if you could, if it's not too personal, you know, what is that like for you? You know, when, when you're there and, and you realize that you have what so many folks envy you for, you know, and, and yet you remain humble, what is that space like for you when you look it all over? It's euphoric. Oh, very you euphoric. Say that. And I mean, it's like when it comes to thinking about that, I mean, it's like it brings tears to my eyes, and then it's like I'm speechless because I can truly say that I'm in love, and I'm truly in love. So that's when I, that's why I say it's euphoric. I mean, there's no other feeling like it. And the reason why mm. I say that is because that was a blessing that I prayed about. I prayed about that. I asked for guidance, and I asked the Lord to send me somebody that truly loved me for who I am and allow me to love them for who they are. Oh, baby. What happened. Okay, did you just go there with me for a second? <laughs> did you hear, did you hear that in his voice? He got a little a little proclaimed just a little bit. <laughs> did you hear that quiver in his voice, baby? <laughs> I love I'm like that. I'm like Monica, I got love all over me. Ooh. All right then, child. Okay, Miss Stephanie Mills, I feel good all over. <laughs> okay, Stephanie say I feel good all over, honey. Even a little child can see it. Woo! <laughs> okay. Yes, Lord, okay. Wait a minute. Oh, we got a call and someone wants to ask a question. We're going to go here, uh, 404931. I'm coming to you right now, sugar. 404931. Hey, baby, you're dishing tea with Big Meat. Good day. How you doing? Hey, what's going on? How are you doing? Hey, uh, um, to the couple, I do want to commend them for um, uh, keeping their relationship for so long. I mean, that's, 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 that's what's going on. I do really respect that and I, I look up to that and hear what you went through and what you're going through and, and how everything is positive. I really respect that. And they didn't even say, like, you know, it, I, it's so hard in Atlanta to even keep a relationship and I really want to commend you on that, I must say. Because Atlanta, especially this city, Atlanta, it's hard, it's hard to keep a relationship. Um, I have a question. Uh, my question is to you. Uh, in order to keep a relationship, do you really is it good or is it good or do you stay out of the club scene? Period. Or you, can you answer that? Ooh, good question. Oh, yeah, that is a good question. But when it comes to the club scene, that that does not cause a problem between us because I'm not a clubber anymore. I don't like to go to the club. He likes to go to the club to dance, and you know. At the end of the day, if somebody came up to him and talked to him, he's not going to be disrespectful or rude or anything like that. He's going to take the number and just ask, talk to him. That's it. Just not to be rude about it. And, I mean, I got that much, you know, trust in him, and he has that much trust in me that, you know, that nothing's going to happen from that. So, mm. okay. I respect that because, you know, reason, reason I said that because I, I go to the club, you know, a good amount because, you know, I go with my friends. My perspective of going to the club is going for the music. I go for the music. I don't go to see how many numbers I try to get or whatever this thing might be. My friends, on the other hand, they want to know, I guess they want to see what they can get into after the back is. But my purpose is, is to, for the music. I love music. I love the dance as well. So, like I said, like, well, I guess that's, that is a good perspective. You said, I mean, if you, if I guess, like you said, one, one person goes to the club, one, one individual don't. But I guess maybe that's a good thing as well. What you think about that? What was that? I'm sorry. By you, by you say, by you say home and he's going to the club and you, you know, it's all about, like you said, it's all about trust in this relationship, so it's based on trust, so I respect that. I understand what you say. Oh, okay. Um, I have another question. Um, Go ahead. I have, I have one ask, more question. I'm sorry. Uh, no, uh, because I wanted to respond to you, but ask your question first, and then I'll, I'll give you my take. Wait, 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 wait. I, have another, I have another question. Uh, like, for example, 
Um, I I am looking through that route as well as uh, when when it's time for me, even if I have a relationship or not, to even have a child. My question is to you: How do you think of, do you think about it? Is it morally right that you that we do it that way as of having kids? Mm. I mean, I mean, my thing about it is like, for example, I don't mind doing it that way, but I do want the other person that gave me that baby to be part of that relationship as well. Now, I won't, I don't want to look at it as a contract because when the child becomes a certain age, twenty-one or whatever the age, they know, they know okay, where's my mom? Where's who is my mom? I, I think I don't. Know. I, I, I just, I just need you to help me on that. All right. Um, Marco? Marco? Marco's still here. Is he there? Marco, yeah. Key, you there? Key, you back? I, I'm back. I do. Okay. Now, as far as that goes, like, the, he is still involved, but, I mean, he knows, um, you know, we sat down and explained it to him that, you know, you have a mother and two fathers, but, I mean, we try to make it as, you know, normal for him as possible. You know, we do, like, all the holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and all of that. We take vacations. It's just that one okay. different thing, but he don't see anything different. He you know us and his mama, too. So, um, when the, you know, as he get older, we're going to explain, you know, more in more detail, but right now he's just four, and he's happy as long as all of us around, so. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you do you think it's okay for him to have a relationship with his biological mom? Yeah. Or is that um, not your I, agreement? I think it. I think it is because <clears throat> I wouldn't think it would be fair of us to take him away from us. You know, because of our uh-huh. situation. That's still his mama at the end of the day. But we. This is like really all three of us raising him at the same time. So it's not us okay. taking him away, but. He spent time with us, and he spent time with her, and we not, you know, we're not doing no baby mama drama, nothing like that. Just civil and peaceful, and raising him to make sure he had a proper okay. upbringing. Okay, but I just, I just wanted them clarified because it wasn't clarified if the actual child had a relationship with the mom or the biological mom. So, because I, I have reasons that I probably want to do that too, but I want to ensure that the child has a relationship with the biological mom as well, you know, because morally, morally I think that's appropriate. But like you said, you clarified that for me, and I appreciate that. Thank you. No okay, and Carla, what I wanted to also say earlier was that don't um, understand that when when we partner – that we're still individuals. So, you know, we still have our own individual tastes and our own likes and carrying on. And a part of the relationship is about understanding that. And once you build that trust, I may not feel like going out dancing. If you want to just need time away from the house or whatever to do you, do you. Because I know at the end of the day when it's all said and done and you come back home, you know I'm sitting up here waiting on you to come and tell me what happened. You know, because right. now it gives it give, it promotes conversation between us. It gives you something to yearn right. and come and tell me about. You know, or oh, baby, right. guess what happened, and this, that, and the other. So right. you know, it creates that dynamic, and right. I think that a lot of us in gay culture miss that because right. we, we're so busy being individual. Right. Uh, hold on, hold on for just a second. Wait a minute, press pause for just a second because I need to let the folks know, listening by computer, I'm down to one minute left of the show, and we're going to continue talking until we can't talk no more. And um, I got my uh, – I got. if you're listening by telephone, you're going to be able to still get everything here. If you're on computer, uh, everything is going to be in the archive, so the parts that you miss, you can always go back and listen to it, okay? So I want to thank everybody for being a part of the show now so that and uh, so that y'all can hear me, and then I'll thank you again later. So I just wanted to say that. Now, Ke- Keyshawn, you were saying what now? I was saying one thing before we end um, the interview. Now, he was saying, you know, about going to the club and trusting, like, if I was getting up. We, you know, we've been around each other for so long. Like, uh, we want to miss each other sometimes. So if we go out to the club as individuals, then that's what we do. But we already know, you know, we just going to have fun. We ain't going on no 
um, I'm looking for a number type. You know, that ain't that ain't gonna yeah, be divided. Yeah. We, if somebody <laughs> approaches us, then they approach us, but we ain't gonna be rude. I know I won't be rude because it's it's still happening to me today. It's still happening to me at work. It's still happening to me everywhere I go. And a lot of times it happened while he's standing right there. So, um, it that that would that would never be a problem. It, it has never been because of what the understanding that we have and. It just it's always been like that. It's worked well like that. So if I go out, you know, shake my ass, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, if somebody see me and approach me, probably, you know, uh-huh. nice to meet you, same thing. But at the end of the day, now go home and we talk about how my night with them, you know, this what I got. And that probably would be thrown in the trash can and that would be it. Or I would call them and explain to them that, you know, I'm in a relationship. You know, just not to leave it, you know, so they would stop trying to pursue me, really. Right. Now, you know, Keyshawn, one of the things that that is key for me is that you are just big country, okay? <laughs> and everybody sits up there and say, honey, this is the kind of man that you need if you go down south. Honey, you are supposed to be... The 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 uh, the image, you know, you are the type of man that everybody's supposed to have. But yet, at the same time, what is being reflected is that your type of man is not welcomed. You know, everybody's still looking for the the, the thug. They want this. They want that. Right, but right. you are someone, uh, child. Please, you know, you you embrace all that. You. You know, the whole Southern hospitality kind of thing. You're a gentle, you know, gentle little mouse, honey, that has, you know, that lion streak, you know, when, when it, it'll come out when it needs to come out. You're very right. manable. You're very personable, you know, and you're all about commitment into the relationship. Now, when I moved, before I moved down here, that's all everybody told me. Oh, well, child, with your personality and them Southern boys that eat you up, child, they love all that. They do, ooh, and then, yes, and uh, ooh, and uh, so I got down here and ran into city folks. Shit. Okay. Got me for the team and LB. Yeah. Okay. The team the kitchen. So, you know, kitchen. that there, baby, that there is that. I got one more caller. Uh, come on up in here. This is uh, 423 635. 423 635. You're on the air. Hey, how you doing? This is Red. Hey, what's up? <laughs> what's going on? Not much. Well, I, I was listening, and and I was listening to what you just said, and you know, I, I think one thing that we in in the community have a problem with is, you, like you were saying, people looking for a thug, people looking for this, for that. You know, I think there's a difference between the fantasy of what we might want for a minute and the reality of what we want, you know, for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I just think that there are, unfortunately, and, and I've said this to you before, unfortunately, because of the way black men have been treated as long as we've been in this country, Black men have been taught to that they have to push their emotions down into the pit of their stomach, and you know they they got to be a rock, right? And then mm-hmm. and then they teach that they teach that to their sons, and right. you know, and then unfortunately you mix that with the whole, you know, you start. You know, you start going out or going to the club, or you start exploring your sexuality and whatever. And if you into the wrong people, you're going to get hurt, and that's going to make you push those emotions even further down. Right, exactly, exactly. You know, so then you you just you have a you have a, uh, a conflict between. What somebody wants as a as a fantasy, you know, for you know, let's let's hook up, let's have sex, let's have, you know, let's do this NSA thing and and 
you know, and I think it's admirable that the two of you have created this life for yourself because it, it, it is not easy. And it's, it's, it's not not just it's not just not easy to find the person, but when you find them, you know everybody that says they're happy for you ain't, ain't necessarily happy for you. <laughs> that's right. true. That is so and true. That's that's something that I I had the hardest time dealing with because I could not understand for the life of me why my closest friends you know wouldn't be happy for me. Why why wouldn't you be happy for somebody? I mean. It just don't. It just been like grass death for at least. I think I've started to get that maybe this year, last year, yeah. for the last four few years. That sometimes I would cry. Sometimes I would be like, just I'm a real emotional person. Just put it that way. So my emotions would always get the best of me if anybody said something out of the way. Until so I just had to start, you know, shrugging it off. Before I did that, I had a lot of sad days, but. It's, it, I guess, you know, that's just the way it is right now. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> the thing is, let okay. me tell you. Right, but let me tell you, jealousy is a powerful emotion. And right. a lot of people don't know how to handle that emotion. I mean, I think, you know, I think all emotions are valid, whatever they are. But there, there is, and and... There's no negative or positive associated with the emotion. It's how you choose to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, if you've never been, if you've never been taught or shown how to deal with that, you know, you're going to, you know, either turn to your baser instincts on it or you're going, you know, it's going to be a learned behavior from your yep. from your peers. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Well, all right. So, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Carla. Oh, Red. All, all right. right. I, will, a, I will chat with you later. Okay, will do. I'm going to put you back down. All right, well, darlings, 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 you guys have made a significant impact, and I'm, and it is my prayer that those who are listening and those who catch this in the archives will um, uh, actually get something from you. Now, I, I just lost my switchboard, honey, so all of my callers, I hope you're still on listening. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Rock talk, honey. Well, she she stops me from time to time. Okay. But um, yes, I I wish you guys all of the very best that the infinite creator has for you, honey. As you guys chart and map your way through, I'm hoping that everything that was said here that somebody pulls something you know, from it in order to enhance and enrich their lives as we have some kind of a blueprint through you two. Scripture says, and the child shall lead, and you guys are not children by no stretch of the word, but being in the age bracket that you are uh, in our culture, uh, you know, it, it tends to let us, to have us to move forward. And hopefully, uh, seeing that it can be done, the rest of us could get on track so that it will be done. Okay. Um, I appreciate so you that. having us on the show, too. Right. Oh, well, darling, honey, I, I, like I told you, this is a story that needed to be spotlighted because we don't hear from the youth. You know, we don't hear from y'all. But before we go, I would, okay, yeah, the, the, the question is, uh, over here in the studio, honey, about seeing the pumpkins, seeing the babies while you're at school. Uh, I know you were saying that you were going to be commuting uh, back and forth, but, you know, how you guys are going to settle that? Because you're going to be way up in Michigan, honey, my home state. And, you know, boo going to be down here in ATL. So, you know, 
how have y'all like, like that particular dynamic? I mean, it's like because I did four years in the Army, so I'm able to deal with separation. This is actually going to be the first time that we're actually separated from each other for a long period of time. But like I, like I said, with the commuting back and forth, um, my classes are only four days a week. So Thursday after class, I'll be flying back from Michigan back to Atlanta. And from that point, we'll be able to spend the weekend together, and then on Sunday, I'll be flying back to school. So, I mean, like like we always say, we mapped it out, we planned it, and everything. Okay. Just <laughs> okay, you got kudos over here in the studio, honey. Okay. <laughs> Little Meech over here dancing, child. She said, okay, the pumpkin. Check the pumpkin, honey. <laughs> But on that note, darlings, I wish you everything, honey, everything, and and continued continued growth and uh, and success, baby. So, you guys, uh, we will stay in touch most definitely, and uh, we'll uh, we'll do Moscatos again real soon. I hope so, because that was ultra fun. <laughs> Uh-huh. Wait a minute, you ain't, you ain't had it in the smoothie yet, child. We put that Moscato in the blender with these fruits and stuff and did a Moscato fruit smoothie. Baby. Wasn't it good? Baby. Hey, Would you get back hey, over here? Me. Yeah. <laughs> that was right. funny, yeah, that Moscato. That was real funny. But I, I want to say on the air, I want to say thank you to my baby and that I love him and that um, I'm actually flying to Michigan in first class. Kudos to you, baby. <laughs> oh, I don't even get that well. <laughs> they treat you better than they treat me, and I work for them, too. And I get a first-class seat. And it ain't no marriage license with that. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> what you saying? What? Oh, this got done with the pie right there. Okay. I get me. Read me alive. Read me alive. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Ow! Okay. See, we over here basking in y'all's asses, honey. We love it because if y'all got it, that means we could get it. So, see there. That's <laughs> yeah. what it's about. <laughs> All right, babies, honey. Y'all go ahead. Be blessed, honey. You know, y'all have my personal line. So uh, call me, let me know what's happening, babies, and we're going to let you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Keyshawn, I know you got the babies and candles, so you go handle the pumpkins. Marco, get ready for that flight, sugar, and we will talk again very soon. Thank you, and have a good day. All right. Bye-bye, baby. Thank you for everything. It was fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> I did. <sighs> oh, hey, mercy, the chair and honey. Just the children. Ladies and gentlemen, honey, that there, I call them the the voice of young gay America, honey. Y'all heard it right here. And I'm just tickled pink, honey. I'm tickled fuchsia. I'm just tickled. Because, child, this here, I hope you guys got something from this and, and can pull something from it. And then examine yourself. Those of you who are single out there and continuously wondering and this, that, and other, honey, you heard it right there. You've been looking in all the wrong places because sometimes what you're looking for is right there in front of you. So just be open to what the Spirit has to give you, honey, and be mindful that what you're looking for may not come in the package that you think it's supposed to come in. So as long as you're open to love and all of these avenues where love comes from, you know, just know that it will happen, and it will happen when you are together and when the time is right. So on that note, darlings, join us next week. Next week I have... Uh, porn star Rock Rockefeller is going to be with us, honey, with Rockefeller Entertainment. So uh, for those of you who know, who are familiar with his work or whatever, yes, honey, Gangster Porn, he's going to be here with us next week, and then we're going to get into the world, the world of of uh, black gay porn and what it means and all of this stuff now. So it's going to be a very explicit show. So I hope to check you guys out next week. Until then, my darlings, I love you all with everything God has for me to love you with. And I will see you guys at the next appointed time. So until then, I just know that you've been dishing tea with Big Meats. Ciao.